What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Pat Young here again for another episode of The Young and the Rowdies. What a pleasure and honor to continue to bring you content on some special guests that have been through the program, the University of Florida, uh, to hear their stories, to hear what's going on with their lives, adversity that they faced. How often do, do, you, do you, we really get a chance to know the players and their stories versus just seeing the results or the fruits of what they've done when we get a chance to really sit down and hear everything they've gone through from their perspective, their upbringing, et cetera. Um, so, so thankful that I get to be the, the medium to bring this to you, that you are listening through whatever podcast network, uh, Spotify, Apple, wherever else. It's just an honor to continue to do this, especially when we're coming right into March Madness. I hope everyone is having a great year, celebrating uh, Black History Month, getting a chance to expand your mind and continue to learn and, and grow your mind. Anyways, this next guest was my teammate for three years. Uh, big guy, big 3-3, three, three, all SEC. Um, went through some adversity in his career, but we get into a lot of things. Also, we have another surprise guest. These two have known each other uh, since Murph was 14. Um, seeing this story go full circle, seeing these guys to connect, uh, and the other guy that's the special guest that comes in, it's, it's really an awesome moment to share with these guys, especially uh, from him knowing Murph when he was 14, saying that Murph had a chance, or saying that this guy had a chance to make it. Uh, that he had a chance to make it to the NBA and then seeing him get his name called back in 2013 by the Chicago Bulls was very special. Anyways, here's the episode. You guys are going to enjoy it. My next guest needs no introduction. It is the one and only Eric J. Murphy, <laughs> my boy. What's happening, dog? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, just out here in Tbilisi, Georgia, in a little bubble with the national team. Just uh, we're getting ready to play Switzerland tomorrow, and we got Georgia. I think it's, it's not Friday, Sunday. The, the, the Georgia so, Bulldogs? No, definitely not. Uh, definitely not Georgia in the states. Definitely a little different Georgia. It's uh, I, honestly, it's a, it's a. I've been here before outside the bubble, Tbilisi. It's a great city, but like right now, we're just in the hotel. We got bubble life. We got the bubble what? life going. How you doing, bro? I mean, you look, you're looking like ageless. You look the exact same since you left Florida I know. Uh, some years ago. And the hair is a little bit crazier and maybe you have a little more facial hair, but you still look the same yeah, skinny. I'm, the same I'm, skinny I'm, in the, I'm in mid season four right now. No haircut, you know, a little, little scruff, but uh, yeah, I feel good. I'm, I'm doing well. You know, obviously we spent a lot of time here last year doing a lot of rehab and coming off the ACL injury and, uh, but I feel great. You know, I've, I've been I've been playing well this year. Uh, I'm in Japan now, um, in, in Fukushima, um, and it's it's been going well, man. I feel good. Uh, I'm glad you think I look the same. You know, I feel youthful. I don't I don't know if I feel youthful. I, I'm I'm glad I look youthful. Yeah, you look youthful. You yeah, for sure. So yeah, you and I we got a chance to spend some time in Gainesville, January February of uh, 2020, and it would have been longer had we not been cut short of. Uh, you know, the whole COVID shutting everything down. Uh, you know, what, what did you end up doing, um, you know, after that, after February? Uh, yeah, we, like you said, man, we, we, we did a lot of rehab together. We did it. We got a lot of work and it was, it was actually really good. You know, I, I was glad that you were there with me. It definitely helped that process, especially early on. Um, but yeah, COVID, COVID got crazy real fast. And, uh, everything went on lockdown, everything closed down, you know, facility closed down and, and, kind of changed my rehab plan a little bit but honestly my Th Thomas and Alex came down and they lived with me in Gainesville um for, for that whole spring in in the early summer and my my rehab turned from you know basketball on court stuff and we couldn't do that it turned from that to we just us three just played like hours of tennis every day really yeah all we did was because because like, it was outside and, and you know Lauren was coaching there and um, she, she, she would let us get on the courts outside and, and gave us some rackets and stuff. And, you know, we would play for like, no joke, like, like three, four hours a day. And when I tell you, when you play and we got good, we got pretty good. I mean, Alex is, Alex played in high school. He's good, but we, you know, you play that much, you get all right. And she coached us up a little bit too. And we got pretty good. And when you play tennis, you know, I wouldn't say high level at all, but when you play hard and you can actually play and you're playing against, you know, and it's our, it's my brother. So we're competing. I'm telling you right, bro, that sport is borderline more tiring. Than, it's a different type of tiring, but it is yeah. more tiring than basketball. And you're outside of the heat, so then that changes it. But 
it was honestly a great like it, it was definitely a, a different plan than i had yeah but it was great you know I, we had a lot of fun living together and, and then spend that much time together and then honestly i think it helped the rehab you know a lot of like lateral movement oh yeah for sure yeah so it was it was good yeah, I think when when uh you were you were doing some conditioning and running and, and uh other uh plyometric drills on the court right before uh we ended up leaving. So you were probably yeah, pretty close and ready to start doing that. Were you like kind of fearful? Cause yeah, that's that's a lot of lateral movement, stopping yeah, going. Yeah. For sure. At, at first too, I think well, like you said, I, I was at a point where I was kind of ready to, you know, I was just about to, you know, be pretty much full go on the court, not contact, but you know, just full go and then COVID hit and, and everything changed. But I, I think it helped me a lot mentally too. Like you said, I had, you know, at first, you know, obviously you have that type of injury and your your mind is definitely, you know, on that when you're, when you're playing sports, any type of sport, any physical activity, you're always thinking like it's in the back of your mind. But I think playing tennis kind of like helped me get over that, that fear early on, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And you no know, fear of contact. So that kind of, you know, I kind of right. eased it, but yeah. But it, it was, you know, like you said, a lot of cutting, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stop and go. So like it was, it was, I think it was very helpful, honestly. Dang, that's like a, a great post ACL uh, recovery. Yeah. You don't have to worry about contact, but you know, yeah, yeah. conditioning, stop and go, uh, charging the net. Then you got to work, working on your hand-eye coordination, challenging your brain well, as well. Honestly, I think it got my feet better. Like I'm moving pretty well this year. I got my feet moving a little bit better. I don't know. I felt... And and the, the best part was like, you know, it's my brother, so we're going hard. Like we're, yeah. we're trying, we're trying to win, and we're we're competing. So like you you, it made me forget about the knee real quick. You know what I mean? I, That's awesome. I, yeah, it was it was good. What? How long did you um? Do you end up staying in Gainesville? Um, you know, with the we stayed down there. We stayed down there because we didn't know how long originally this this whole COVID. You know, when it first happened, it was like two weeks. It's gonna be the, you know lockdown, and then. Everything will be back to normal. That that just did not end up being the case. <laughs> so uh, we kind of we were trying to ride it out and, and wait it out until you know we were gonna we were, we were thinking you know the facility will open again. We'll get in the gym together and we'll be able to work out. And but you know it kept getting crazier and crazier. So I think like early June, right before Alex's birthday is June third. So right before his birthday, we uh, we went back to Rhode Island um, and went to see my family and, and went up there because we have. You know, it's hard to find, you know, I didn't play for a year and, and I was getting ready to come back and, and play. And it's hard to find, it was hard to find a gym mm -hmm. but to, to work on, you know, basketball. And uh, we have the keys to our old middle school gym up there. So we were like, you know what, right now that's, that's the best we got. That's yeah. all we got. So we, we went back home and me and Thomas actually drove up. Um, you know, I had the Jeep down in Florida, so I drove up. And we stopped and saw Billy O'Mara in North Carolina. He's, co he's, he's a video coordinator in North Carolina State now. And uh, so we stopped and saw him. And then we went back home. And, and uh, then we were back on the court working out in, in the gym. It was, you know, it was honestly like, you know me too. Like I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a homebody. Like I'm not, other than working out, I'm kind of a homebody. I'm watching, you know, movie shows. I'm kind of, you know, I don't want to say lazy, but you know. Um, you, I'm, you're, you're an expert at knowing how to chill. That's the yeah, way yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, that's a good way to put it. So, like the whole COVID thing was like, I was like, yo, this is kind of what I do anyway. <laughs> like, 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 it wasn't that much, and, you know. Like a lot of stuff, like I, you know, me and you love to fish. Like we, we, we and like I'll go fishing, and that's kind of like social distancing on its own. And yeah, a lot of stuff that I was doing and I enjoy anyway. It was like kind of naturally like that. And then I got to spend so much time with my brothers you know I, it, we don't get that a lot anymore you know all of us playing in different places so it was honestly like i, I know it was, it's, it was a real time for a lot of people but like i really i really enjoyed the, really enjoyed it yeah, yeah i really enjoyed I mean, the, the time of the early stage of covid and now it's you know it's, it's getting to the point where it's like all right come on yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of fatigue it's like okay like okay we we get it now but what can we do you know just gotta keep yeah yeah, it's, yeah exactly. that's awesome man uh, so there's not a lot of fit. Did you did you fish when you back, went back home? Like I, I know you oh, you yeah. were fit, you were like killing it in in Florida. You were going. Where was the place you went? Um, Pine with Island. Your buddy? Pine Island. Pine, Florida, yeah, on the Gulf Coast. Yeah, you went there a bunch of times. You had your little your little kayak that you would take out for hours. Like you were you were legit. That was my other rehab. Was you know my kayak has pedals, so I was just like 
pedaling the whole day fishing. So I was like working on my, my, my leg strength kind of, <laughs> um, but when I got home, I mean, Rhode Island, I live five minutes from the ocean. So okay. I was, I, when I went home, I was right back in the kayak, I, you know, fish for stripers in, in, in Narragansett Bay. And you know, there's a couple of lakes that I fish at at home. And it was honestly, like I said, it, for a lot of people, I understand. And like it, 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 there was a, there is fatigue now, but a lot of it, I enjoy it, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you and, and I, we well, got I, don't, I wouldn't say I enjoyed, you know, it didn't sounds, mess up what you normally. Yeah, it's what I do anyway. I was pretty much doing the same thing I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> as long, yeah, as long as you're able to have a court, because yeah, man, you you know, you're extremely hardworking. Um, when it comes like outside of the court, you're extremely great at chilling and resting your body and just like <laughs> you get into the gym, you do everything you need to do, you stay there long, extra, get your shots, get your reps, whatever you feel as though uh, you know, you always go above and beyond what you need to do, and then you're like, all right. I'm done. I am chilling. <laughs> when I'm done doing my job, you know, I'm, I'm relaxing for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm an expert at relaxing, like you said. Yeah, we, we had a chance. We lived together uh, sophomore and junior year. We lived at Keys. We lived in the back. Uh, my sophomore year, your junior year, and then your uh, last year, we lived in the front of Keys. And man, you were always just, <laughs> Merv, always in his room, chilling, watching. We watched Breaking Bad together, going through that. Uh, uh, oh, great times, man. But let's hey, let's. Take, I want to take it back. Today. Not much has changed, bro. Not That's much true. has changed. I want to take it back. Let's get let's get into into your story. So all the way from Rhode Island, South Kingston, Rhode, Rhode Island. You know what? How did your journey, your your basketball journey, start? Um. Well, actually, you know, I would say it kind of started like it was almost you know, born into me. Um, you know, my, my dad played, my dad, Jay Murphy played, uh, played at Boston college. And then he, he got drafted and played in the NBA for four years, two years with the Clippers, two years with the Washington bullets when they were the bullets, now the wizards. And, uh, he met my, my mom is Finnish. That's where I get my, my citizenship, my I'm half Finnish. Um, so I'm with this national team. Um, and she, she actually played pro basketball growing up too in Finland and Sweden. So, uh, they met in LA. She, she came to the States in her twenties and they met in LA, uh, when he was playing with the Clippers and then, uh, they, you know, they, they stayed together. They, they moved to Washington DC together. And then I was actually born in, in Lyon, France. My dad, after playing four years in the NBA, he played seven years overseas. He played in France and Italy. And I was born in Lyon, France and I lived there for like a year. And then I moved to Italy. I lived there for the next five years, um, when he was playing there. And I think that's where it all started. You know, like I, I, my earliest mem my earliest memories in life are from Italy. Like, you know, you don't remember much from when you're, when you're little, but, um, you know, I, I remember, you know, I remember bits and pieces of Italy and, and I think that's where it all started for me. You know, I'd be on the court, like running around with the basketball at halftime and stuff like little, you know, little kid. Yeah. Just, just like watch my dad play, just running around dribbling the basketball. Like people would think it was funny. Like I, like four or five years old and then uh then i came to the states uh they, they settled in the states in rhode island that's where my aunt was so they, they ended up moving there and to south kingstown and that's where i grew up so i claim rhode island as, as that's my home you know south kingstown rhode island, it's, it's one it's my favorite place it's a special place for me um but then uh growing up you know i played baseball um basketball like just like a bunch of sports just normal kid life like just running around with my friends getting into trouble, doing nonsense, like skateboarding, all that. But I think when I was like 12 or 13, you know, I, one of my, one of my uh, dad, my dad knew somebody that the guy, Jim Barron, he coached at URI and he coached at St. Bonaventure and, and, and Canisius. And he, he was, he was a good college basketball coach. And his son who became close friends, one of my close friends to this day, Billy, I, he was playing with his AU team when he was like 12 or 13. And uh, I started playing with this AU team and I like, did, I couldn't get off the bench. Like it was, I mean, I was, you know, I was good in my hometown, small town, like rec leagues and stuff. But I was like, yeah, I went to this AU team, like it was terrible, honestly. It was just really bad. Like I was, you know, a big goofy kid too. You know, I was tall for my age and I, then we, I didn't get on the team early enough to go to, to play for them in nationals, but they went to nationals like 12 and under nationals. But my dad was like, all right, like I'm going to take you to Virginia beach 
we're going to watch these games, even though you can't play. And like, you're going to see what it's really like. And we go down there and there's like 12 year olds dunking. And like, I'm um, like, uh, yeah, 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 it was, you know, like the AU national, and you know, these kids are probably like 13, 14, you know, how AU was, but, um, so then gotta save, save, they got to pro- probably save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I remember, I remember going home from Virginia beach with him and, and I was like, in my head, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm nowhere near what these kids are. And, and he basically was like, if, cause you know, he, he had done it, he knew what it took. So he basically was like, if you want to do this and, and you really want to commit to this game and like, this is what you want to be great at. Like, he's like, I'll, I'll help you. Like I'll, I'll, you, you can be, he's like, it's just going to take a lot. So I was like, you know what? Like, I love basketball. It's just, I grew up, you know, I mean, I, it was just in my blood. Like I always had a basketball in my hand. So I was like, yeah, I do want it. And this is what I want to do. And uh, ever since then, you know, that's when I started taking it seriously, like 12 or 13. And my dad would be in the gym with me for hours and hours, but that's, that's how it all started. When, uh, man, that's, that's, that's crazy. So, so similar to, um, I had Casey on a few weeks ago in, in uh, Prather, and he just talked about how- Yeah, yeah, I listened to it. I listened yeah, to it. just how he realized like, dang, I'm not good. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm big, I'm big, and I have like, you know, people look at me, but he was like, I couldn't even make a layup. And he was like, you know what? I'm never gonna let, I'm never gonna be that kid again. I'm gonna become the best. And like in one year, he came from being, you know, one of the worst, just a big kid on the team that he was on the team just because he was big to being, you know, the lead, one of the top players in seventh grade. And um, that's awesome. I mean, it's great that you had your, your, your dad and, and he allows you to, um, to see that you needed, like what, what it took to be there. And he's like, if you want this, I'm, I'm going to help you get there. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't always easy. No, he helped me. And like, there were times for sure, you know, along, along the way where, you know, like I was, it was miserable. Like being in the gym, like he, he wasn't, you know, he didn't take, and I was the first, first kid, you know, I have two younger brothers and they, I think progressively they get, the parents get a little easier and easier on the kids. Like I just remember there'd be times in the gym where my dad would be, you know, on me, on me. Like it was, it was, and like at the time you don't realize it, but you look back as you get older and you're like, that was so important. And, and right. you know, he, to me, you know, I, he's the biggest, you know, he's, he's my hero. He's the biggest influence I've had in my life. Like without him, I would, there's no shot. I would ever, you know, get to where I am today. And, but he, he's the one that, you know, he started it off. I mean, he got the ball rolling, man. It's got, I mean, I can only imagine your dad has to be so proud and just, you know, from his career, you know, parents always have the goal that they want their kids to be better than they were better men, better, especially being an athlete. Want my kids to be a better athlete. I was, I'm going to try and, and it's, he's got to just be so proud of all three of his boys, just living their dreams, chasing after it, uh, giving me a chance to play, you know, play division one basketball and then going on to play overseas. Like, man, you, you know, it's not, and no one's journey goes exactly, but the, the fact that you had the opportunity and, and able to do it, man, is, is, is pretty incredible. And your mom as well, man, love your mom. She's awesome. How, how is everybody, how is the fam doing, by the way? They're good. They're good. They're her and my dad are at home in Rhode Island. And, uh, you know, they're, they're breathing. No, that's Wi Fi. No, I might have in Georgia. I don't know what the Wi Fi is like. Here, right, but, I'll, I'll um, ask you again. I'll ask you again. So, so how is, how is, uh, everybody in your family doing right now? Everybody's good. Um, you know, my parents just with this whole COVID thing, they're just at home, uh, laying low, just hanging out with each other, spending a lot of time together. Um, you know, my mom, she always jokes like when we come home, she's like, oh, the boys are home. Like I'm cooking these big meals. But like, you know, now I'm sure she's like, she's texting us every day. She's bored. You know, she, <laughs> her, she wishes we were there. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're great. You know, like you said, you, you love my mom. My mom's she's she's the best. She's she's awesome. She's like the most supportive, you know, through the years. Like, hey, you all that. She's coming to every game. She's making peanut butter and jellies for the whole team. You know, she's like she loved that. She loved it. She just she just loved the whole process of it. And, uh, you know, she's she's definitely a special lady. Where's uh, where's Alex and Thomas at right now? Alex is across the hall. Uh, <laughs> he's right. Here, he's right here with me. Uh, where we're, we're doing this national team thing together. And 
Uh, Thomas is at Vermont. He's at the University of Vermont. He was at Northeastern. He transferred. Uh, so he's at Vermont now. Yeah, him and Alex, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I would never change a thing about I, I, Florida is, you know, I've, it's other than South Kingstown, Gainesville is my favorite place in the world. Like being a Gator, there's nothing more meaningful to me. You know, Alex, like Duke, Florida, Northeastern, he's in college for like six years. Thomas is doing the same thing. I'm like, yo, this guy's figured it out. <laughs> I've been living the dream for a long time. Hey, if I, yeah, if I could have extended my college career for, you know, another two years, I would have. <laughs> for sure, man. Gainesville for two more years. What? Gosh, for free? Man, you ain't lying. So when, what, at what point, um, you know, when your dad starts really training you, when you start obviously transitioning and, and evolving and growing as a player, uh, did it really, things start really clicking for you? You're like, okay, like, I'm pretty good. Like, I can compete. You know, you saw, you saw those kids at 12, and then you're like, when you're like, I'm one of those kids now. You, yeah, not that yeah. you were ever, you know, the explosive dunking on everybody, you know. No, you know? definitely not. It was never in my game. <laughs> Um, my, my dad, it was, my dad's, you know, main focus was definitely a lot of skill work. Cause, uh, he knew I wasn't going to be an above the rim type of guy. Just wasn't in, just, you know, he knew himself and he knew I was going to be similar to him. So, um, no, I think when I was like, you know, we were in, from 12 to like, I mean, from 12 until I left for college, he was always in the gym with me for as long as I wanted to go, he would be in there for three, four hours with me if I wanted, whatever I wanted to do, he was, you know, he would do it. Um, but I think the first couple of years, just like kind of grown into my body and doing so much skill work and, and fundamental work with him, it made it, my improvement was, was quick. So like 14 and under nationals with that same team I, I played for, uh, we went to 14 under nationals and like we're a small team from Rhode Island and, uh, we're playing like, you know, these teams from Philly and, and LA and stuff like that. And they, they just look like they're much better than us. We're the undersized and, and we were scrappy and we started beating a couple of these teams and we make a little noise. And like, I was playing well. And I was just like, I was playing really well. Just, you know, jump hooks. That's all early on. All it was, was jump hooks, man. That's all it was face up jumpers and jump hooks. That's like what I made my, my living on at a young age. And uh, after that nationals, and then, you know, I, I went to prep school. And then after my first year of prep school, I started getting recruited pretty heavily. And, and the AU scene definitely helped. Um, but yeah, I think uh, around 14, 15 is when I started to, you know, figure out that, you know, I had a chance to uh, to, to do something with this. You know, I, I didn't know what it would end up being, but, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. And, and, you know, I, I enjoyed work. I enjoyed working hard at basketball because I loved basketball. You know, like I, I was, I didn't care if I was in the gym for five, six hours. Like it was fun to me. Uh, so like, just, just, I was always trying to play. I was always trying to improve. I went to high, like I said, I lived at high school. I lived at prep school, St. Mark's in, in South Carolina, Mass. And I was fortunate enough to have a, a great, great coach who was also a huge influence on my life, David Lubick. Um, he just retired a few years ago. We had a little reunion for him, but unbelievable high school coach. And, and we had a really good team. We had a lot of good players come through there. Um, but yeah, that, that taught me a lot about you know, he taught me a lot. You know, I, I wouldn't say I was, you know, I was a small town kid from around. I, I was never soft. You know, like I always was willing to put in work. Like, but the high school, our practices were, and you remember how Florida practices were. My high school practices were harder, unquestionably. They were harder than the bubble? Phys physically, I don't know. The, the running we did, the shape okay. I was in high school, like, he would, our coach would try to break you every day. Every day he would try to break you. So like, it, but it helps so much, you know, like I said, it's one of those things you look back on because at the time you're like, this is miserable. Like, I don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, like strong, like strong man training. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he, he was a great high school coach. And, and uh, like I said, when I went to, when I went to prep school after my first year and then the, the next spring of AU during my freshman year, I started getting recruited pretty heavily. Um. That's when I was like, okay, I can I can turn this into something. At least, you know, at that in my mind at that point, I was like, okay, I can I can go to college somewhere for free. Yeah. That's, I didn't know what level it would be at yet, and then you know, I figured that out later. But um, that's 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 around the time I started to figure that out. I wanted to ask you really quickly before we get into your recruiting. Um, why? What? What is the story behind the double threes? 
33? Yeah, why 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 is that? What was that the number that you you chose to rock and how long did you rock that one for? Uh my my freshman year at at St. Mark's, I couldn't wear that cuz one of our seniors had it, so I wore 11. My mom wore 11, so that's why I chose 11. Um and before that, I was always 42 because that's what my dad wore. But then like you know, I I grew up close to Boston, so I was always a Celtics fan. And 33, you know, obviously Larry Bird. That's just like that's what it was. Hey man, what it was. I mean, he was, you know, I, I was too young to, to see him live, but like I would watch like old VHS tapes of like, you know, his, his, they had the documentaries on VHS of him. And then I would watch like, you know, NBA TV, like the old throwback games of him, the hardwood classics. And, and I was, and I just, you know, and there's something to be said, you know, he's just, just a white guy from Boston. Just like he was just, very, I mean, he's from Indiana, but it's just like, you know, a regular guy. I was, I, I felt like I related to him a little bit. Um, obviously never came close to his greatness, but, uh, you know, I, I wear, I wore 33 in for him for sure. Um, but now I've actually changed. I'm still 33 with the national team, but a couple years ago when I was in Germany, I, somebody had 33 and that was the first year in my career that I couldn't wear 33. So I was like, I have to come up with a new number. And I had came up, I had come off a hip injury that, that year too. So I was like, I'm starting from scratch. I went zero. And, and I've had the best year of my career off zero. And then unfortunately at the end of that season, I tore my ACL and then, but I came back this year and this year in Japan, I'm wearing zero again. So I like zero now too. There you go. 30, 33 will always have a special place in my heart. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, man. Big, big. I mean, we know what you did out there when you were out on that three point line, led the SEC uh, in three point percentage uh, back in 2013 when you were all first team, which was pretty insane. Um, yeah, I just want to ask you. Um, oh, off topic question. Since you're bringing up Larry Bird, do you, how do you think he would he would thrive in the game today? So I, there, there's I, I get I always I get asked this a lot because I always bring him up when we're t- like with teammates conversations about all time greats, and I'm like, okay, because a lot of people don't didn't a lot of people our age didn't see him live, and like, yeah, there isn't the same footage from back then as there is today, you know, there isn't like the YouTube, like there, there isn't the same coverage. They didn't have the same coverage, but if, if you go back and watch his games and then you watch some of his YouTube highlights and like, you saw how that guy could play, like his just feel for the game, his ability to score. His was, IQ uh, was insane. His, yeah, his IQ was like next, next level. Like his vision was unbelievable. He was just tough. Dude was gritty. Like he, he would never, he was, he's a legendary trash talker. Like, he just put in so much work, but like the game is so different now, man. Guys are so big and athletic and fast. Like, like he, I, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, I think there's definitely players that transcend eras just because of their their skill. Like, he, like you see, like a Luka Doncic, like he's so good, and he's not like the athlete that a lot of these guys are. But uh, like, I would compare, like, you know, he. I think Larry would be, you know, he's obviously he's not a point guard, but the somewhat, you know, the, the skill level would allow him to still be great for sure. I mean, there's, I'm not saying he'd be the best player in the NBA by right. any means, uh, yeah. But like he would be, he would be very, he'd be a, he'd be, I think he'd still be an NBA All Star. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm reading this book right now. I'm sure you probably heard of it, Extreme Ownership. Yeah, I have, I've heard of it. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's no question in my mind that the reason him and Magic were going back and forth is not by mistake. You know, if, if. Uh, there's no such thing as a bad team, but bad leaders and great teams are usually comprised of great leaders. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that Larry Bird would have had the opportunity to lead his team, a team in this era. I don't know if they, how many championships, but they, I, he for sure be on a playoffs. His shooting ability, man. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 just I, his skill level. Yeah. His, his skill, skill level. level. He, I think he would be an NBA all-star for sure. But the, the, the talent level today across the board, I think right. is higher. Then. So it's, yeah. it would be more, it'd be harder to compete for championships for sure. Yeah, it'd be hard to compete for championship. But I think for anybody right now in the NBA, you know, going against a lot of these guys are unguardable. Anyways, defense. Yeah. <laughs> and the, I mean, we, we talk about eras, the, the the rule changes too. Like, like you can't guard like you could then. No. The, the physicality of the game was different then, but the skill, like like this athleticism and speed, wasn't what it is now. Yeah. So they're give and take for sure. 
It's give and take. But it's hard to say, you know, but I think there's, you know, there are players that transcend eras for sure. Like I, Madden, I, I like wish there was a way we could we could just get them all in their primes, get them all in their primes, and just just go. Just let's let's get the debate over with, and just let's just get a season full of the greats. Um, so let's get back on you, Murph. So you're you're starting to get recruited. Um, you're still not sure at that point of like the perspective of the coaches re recruiting you, like, like mm -hmm. you know, where they see you fitting in and what was that process for you? And when did, when did coach Donovan come on the scene and, and when he came on the scene, you know, how likely was it? It's weird, you know, come from, from South Kingston to go to Gainesville of all places. Like how, how did that whole thing com comprise and, and get together? Well, he, he's a Northeast guy, you know, he's, he's, he went to Providence. He's from New York. Um, so like he had Northeast ties, which I don't know if that really makes, you know, your recruiting, it doesn't really make a difference, but I think, you know, maybe he, he looked there more than, you know, he's down in Florida. Maybe he'll look up North rather than just in the South. I don't know. But, uh, the recruiting process, it got crazy. Like my sophomore year. And, and honestly, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. Like I, I didn't really, like, it wasn't, I took so much you know, when you're that that age, like, and I'm just playing basketball, like, and I just love playing. I just want to have yeah. fun with my boys and, like, go win games in high school. And, die. like, we just had so – but then all the recruiting happens, and it's, like, you're getting calls every day. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a big phone guy. Like, I'm, it's just yeah, not me. Man. I'm talking to people every day. Like, and the pressure when you're a kid, you know, you don't really – honestly, I did, I think personally, my personality, I did a pretty good job of, of dealing with that. But – you know, you still feel it. Like, it's like, oh, you, you got to go to the best place, the, the biggest, you know, whatever it may be. People are putting all these all this pressure on you to go to certain places. Look, like, there's a lot going on for a, a 15 to a 14. For me, at age, there's a, it's just a lot going on for a kid to process. So, like, I really didn't enjoy it. Um, and, you know, at, at a young age, I think I figured out, you know, a lot of these guys recruiting you, they're just telling you what you want to hear. Like that's a big part of it, uh, and and for some reason I just I kind of figured that out early, and I was like, these guys are all saying the same thing. It's it's like, I just want to go play. Like I I want to go somewhere that, that I feel comfortable. And um, he started recruiting me. We played against the Florida Rams in a tournament in Pittsburgh, and Ray I played Shippen. really well. And Ray Shivin and Kenny Kaji, yeah. yeah. And I played really well that game, and I was a year younger than them. So like I was I was I was playing up 17s. So I was like 15 or 16. I played well, and uh, after that he kind of started recruiting me. And then he came to St. Mark's uh, for a visit. He came to visit me at St. Mark's, and it was actually a funny story. He came up there and we had a fire. Drill. There's like 300 kids in the whole school. It's a small school, so we had a fire drill and we all lined up outside. And and he he had to like do the whole drill with us and. Um, <laughs> And he, he's like, we're out there, like, and he's like feeling his pockets, and he's like, he's like, I can't find my wallet. I said, Where's my wallet? And I'm like, I'm just, I don't know what's going on. He's like, my coach is like, oh, we'll try to find your wallet. Turns out one of the the faculties, one of the teachers, like a little, because the faculty would live at the school and they had their kids there. It's like a little seven year old kid pickpocketed him. What? <laughs> Took Billy D's wallet. Took coach's wallet, and uh, like we ended up finding it, but it was just like, a funny story. And then uh, after that, oh, coach. <laughs> after that, I, I visited Florida. That was my sophomore year of high school, and then I visited Florida. That's the fall of my junior year of high school, and I went to. Uh, they brought me on the football field for like when they got their championship rings. It was a joke, Kim Allen, all them. And I was on. I was on that. The same visit was Herb was on that visit with me, Irving Walker, and like that experience and then like we went out that night with Joe Kim, Corey out like they were back on campus it was like I'm from South Kingston Rhode Island I go to prep school with 300 kids I was like what is going on I was yeah. blown away and I, yeah. I left my, I mean I think my dad was with me but you know he was at the hotel let me go out and when I left that visit I was like I think he knew it was over there was no chance I was going anywhere else I was just like yeah I'm <laughs> so I committed during my junior season um okay but I was going like you know I don't really, really talk about this much but like my junior year of high school I was I was like just living away from home uh you know being in high school I was like it, it wears on you and I was like 
going like the recruiting process too. Like everything was kind of like piling up and I was like, I was just like not having a good time. And I remember I was sick. I was like really sick. I had like some stomach bug. And I was like, you know what? I'm committing today. Like I'm, I'm just doing it. Like I'm getting it done with like, and I was almost, I was so, I think I was really homesick too. Cause I almost, the, my okay. final, nobody, no, nobody really knows this actually. So like, you're getting an inside scoop here. Um, okay. So like my final, my final, I, I had like a list of schools, like Florida, Ohio State, Marquette, a couple like, a couple other ones, but um, Rhode Island wasn't on that list, URI. And I, I told you about the guy, Jim Barron, he was coaching there and, and Billy was thinking about going there too. Was, I was still close with him. And uh, that day I was like, I want to go, but my, for some reason, like in my head, I was like, I kind of want to go to URI. Like I almost pulled the trigger for URI and they had, no one had any idea that they were even in the, in the mix. And it was really, really close because I was so homesick and I was only like two hours from home, but at that age, I was like, I just want to go back home. You know, I was, I was, so I was really, really close. And then I ended up like two days later, I was like, I decided, you know, my heart was like with Florida. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to commit to Florida. And, and after that, like, it was like, a, you know, I mean, you know how it is, the way is lifted. I was, I, we won it my junior and senior year when the, when the league championship in high school like I was just so happy I, I felt like playing so I was playing so free again like there was nothing you know I had no stress and it was it was it was like the most fun I've had I, I had I had yeah. had a while you know what I mean but yeah it was, it was yeah. close your I almost got the call your I almost got the call oh, man. I almost the went I, I think I was considering I was considering JU uh, Jacksonville University we had a uh, Cliff Warren was the head coach and I was like man you know it wouldn't be a bad idea a just, home draw. right there man it's it's you know the if you're good you know the the, the scouts are going to come where you're at you know and I was like you know what nah I was pretty much born a Gator my grandparents uh so that was kind of easy for me we ended up we played URI uh I think your junior year did, they came they came to Gainesville yeah yeah, we smacked. We kicked, we kicked their butts. We we smacked yeah. them as as you can imagine. We smacked a lot of people on those teams. Man, those teams we were on, man, we smacked a lot of people. So okay, after you finish but, up, but Billy, my, Billy Donovan did it for me. That was the reason. Yeah, like I remember on my visit, he was the one thing I really loved and respected about him is he did, he did not bullshit you. Like he would tell you straight up, whatever how it was how he felt, and he was he, you know I'll give him credit. He's usually right. Uh, <laughs> He, 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 uh, he, he told me, he was like, listen, I, I know all these other places they are promising me all these things. He's like, if you come here, like, I'm not saying you're going to play. He's like, you're going to have to work for it. He's like, but I think, you know, he's like, if you, if you want to work for it, you know, you can be great here. And I, I really respected that. Like he was just being honest with me. So I, I really connected with him and that was, that was the draw that, that sealed the deal. I love that. Yeah. It, that, that's been something that's been reiterated by everyone that's been recruited by coach Donovan. Uh, on the podcast, it's just like he he just it's a straight shooter, you know. He's he's not about uh, even for um, Matt Walsh. He he told me, um, you know, Matt Walsh when he was getting heavily recruited, he was like, everybody else was telling me I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that, they're going to do this for me. He's like, Coach Donovan was like, you know, you're going to have to earn it. You know, I'm going to help you get better. Uh, it's not going to be easy. And he was like, that separated him from 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 everybody. Because, you know, the, the recruiting process is so crazy, man, because it's, you know, nowadays, nowadays, a lot of kids, they they want just want to get offers. You know, they just want to be able to say, oh, I got offered by this school, not even without even like really considering like wanting to go there. And it's like these are grown men that, that are putting effort forth to try to create relationships with you and try to really like they don't want to just waste their time if you're not really considering uh, going to their school. But then again, from our our era of, of recruiting before it got so much into this spectacle of of social media and just everyone needing to know what we're doing. I couldn't um, imagine going through it now. Oh man, I couldn't imagine going through it now. But it's just like we, you know, for me as well, like I just wanted to be a kid. I just wanted to enjoy the process. I love playing the game. I loved working on my game. I love winning. I love dunking on everybody. And then like I wasn't a phone guy. I didn't even know how to talk to girls on the phone. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. Like like it, yeah, when it first happened, you know, when you first start to get recruited, like it's cool. It's, it's really cool. cool. It's really cool. It's exciting. Schools, you're getting these calls from these schools. And then after a little bit, it's just like, I, I just didn't, I really got sick of it. Really sick yeah. of it. Oh my gosh. Clemson, 
the letters I was the they were so weird. They were, the letters were so weird. I remember getting a letter uh, from Clemson, and it just talked about how Oliver Fornell, the coach at the time, like the foods he liked to eat. Like he loved seafood, and I'm like, what does this have to do with me wanting to get recruited? It, but it really was like getting handwritten letters from Coach Donovan. Um, you know, those things really, really stood out because I know like he actually sat down and took the time to do that. Or, or maybe Tracy did it. I don't know. I, to no. this day. <laughs> I mean, Tracy's the glue that held the entire, she's still holding Without her. Tracy is awesome. I, I hope her, to get her on the show. She's going to be the first woman on the show for sure. Without her, Florida basketball would have been shambles years ago. Years ago, man. Gosh, Tracy, <laughs> Tracy Bath. Um, but um, okay. You, you get recruited, you finish up the process. I mean, uh, and you're going trans transitioning into your first year. Um, what was it like for you seeing Coach Donovan from being the recruiter to finally like being a freshman on campus? Like, you know, was there some shock into how things were so different? You know, I remember you you had the low cut then, bro. You were skinny. Yeah, yeah. You, you didn't have you didn't have a lot of Florida sun on you. So you no, <laughs> definitely. I mean, obviously, right now I'm a little pasty as well, but you know, <laughs> but, you know I got to get I got to get back on the water in the summer fishing. That's when I get. But uh, no, when I got down there. Uh, it was kind of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I, it was kind of what I expected almost. Like, I, I don't know if I had like an exact idea of what it was going to be like, but I knew how he was. I knew how good the teams there had been. And, you know, they had been down for a year or two between the championships and when I got there, but like that almost scared me a little bit. Cause I was like, oh boy, like, you know, it's They weren't that good last year, you know, coaches intense. Uh, but you know, I, I came in with Kenny Boyan, and and uh, he was like a, he was a great, great high school player, and we lived together, and and we were always in the gym together. Like that's just like you know, we were kind of like similar with that. We were always in the gym, and as much as different as it was coming from you know Rhode Island and St. Mark's, like these small places, and going to Gainesville, and there's that many students, and it's like the culture shock, like the the Gator culture. Like I had never experienced anything. Like I, I like I grew up watching the Patriots because yeah. I was. Like, I was the home football team for me, but like I didn't know football like that. I didn't know how the, the football culture down down south was, and like there was a lot of things that I, I didn't really. Ha I had no idea what to. But the basketball part of it, I kind of had somewhat of an idea. You know, I, I think, like I said before, my high school practices were crazy, like crazy, crazy. Like, and our coach was also crazy in a good way. Like, he he was definitely nuts, and he definitely got on you, but like it, it definitely helped. So like Coach Donovan, you know how intense he is and 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 how serious he can be and, and he'll get on you too. But like it was almost like it, it was almost like a he, he was he was almost he's much nicer than my high school coach. <laughs> 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 uh, but and then and practices, you know, the biggest thing for me, my freshman, year, I think the biggest adjustment was uh this the mental speed of college basketball. Yeah. Like not even the physical part of it. And I wasn't ready physically for sure. You know, I mean, I don't know if anybody is at, at 18. I mean, you were you know, just you were <laughs> simply, you were simply built different, but uh, you know, I, like I was, like you said, I was, I was, I was like the same height. I was 6'10". I was like 195, 200 pounds. And like, you know, SEC basketball is grown men. There were some animals there. Yeah. Some, some real grown men. So like that, that part definitely, you know, uh, physically, but I, I wasn't good. Like, no matter what, I wasn't physically going to be ready. You know what I mean? Like that just wasn't in my genes. Like I wasn't going to, like, it was going to take some work for me. Right. Um, but mentally too, I think, you know, high school, you know, you get by on being bigger and more athletic and, and, and I, you know, not that I was ever a great athlete, but in high, I, when I was young, I was pretty, I was pretty athletic, uh, much more so than I am today. Yeah. But, you know, I think the mental, the mental part of it was, was such a big adjustment. Like practice was so intense mentally, like physically, it wasn't harder than my high school practices. And I don't think anything ever will be like, that's just, I'm serious. It was, it was, it was torture. The running. We I'm just, worried. Were, 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 was this coach like abusing you guys? Like, no, no, not at all. He was, he was, he was building. <laughs> On the court? He was building. This guy was David Lubick. I'm telling you, he was building character, huh? Instrumental, yes, in building toughness. Instrumental, awesome. but uh, yeah, physically, like 
practices weren't, you know, I was ready for the physical, not, I wasn't ready physically to go, like, like I said, like I was skinny, but for the physical difficulty, I was ready. But the mental, the mental part of it was, it was definitely an adjustment. Like you had to be, you know, preparing, scouting, like we didn't really scout in high school. No, no, that's, so like, I remember my freshman year, first couple games, you know, I played pretty well. Like I was like, oh, I'm excited. I mean, we played, you know, we played like Presbyterian or something like that. Like you smacked them and I had, you know, I played well as a freshman. I had like, you know, like 15 points or something. I was all juiced up. Then we played Florida State early. And I remember I went in pretty early in the game and like, you know, I'm nervous as a freshman. And like, I like, I messed up like one play and it was, that was it, I was done. Cause like, you know, it was a simple play and I just wasn't, you know, I was so like caught up in the moment that, that like, I, I, I just didn't, I like missed something, like missed a screen or something like, or something, you know, something simple. I don't remember what it was, but I just remember I didn't play the rest of that game. And I had to like really earn my way back after that. But that, that's, I mean, that, that helps you in the long yeah. run, you know, for sure. And I think that was the biggest adjustment for me, but um, fortunate to have coach Donovan, you know, he, Absolutely. he helps, helps you so much as a player and as a person and just to grow and become better and, and learn how to become better for you know, sure learning how to get better is is um, is so important like you have to know yourself individually and, and kind of learn the process of, of becoming better yeah so Murph uh speaking of childhood we're doing something um came up just now uh, there's a surprise guest that that's uh wants to pop in and say what's up something we're doing a little bit different here Oh, wow. Look at this. What's up? How, how are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been way too long. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing yeah. well. You're are you in you? Japan? Uh, for the season, yeah. But right now I'm in Tbilisi, Georgia. We're in, we're in a national team bubble right now. Um, you can't spell that. Tbilisi? I can. <laughs> T-B-I-L-I-S-I? Yeah. Oh, cool. Pretty quick, yeah. Um, no, so a little, a little bit about Jeff and I's relationship. Like we go way back, like the early, like when I was like 14, I think he was the first guy, 13 Never. or 14, the first guy that was like, this kid could be good. Yep. And I wasn't very good even when he said I could be good. He so was he, talented. He was you were super talented. You know, I, I, I honestly think you didn't have any, like you didn't have the confidence then more than anything quiet yeah. <laughs> you're super quiet man. you didn't say anything and uh Now, this is like Patrick. I, you know how much I love you, Patrick? Like, Eric is like maybe my favorite kid ever. Awesome. I, I mean that. Like, maybe my favorite kid ever. Again, because we've known each other since I kind of broke in okay. to the recruiting deal to some degree. And like, St. Mark's, I would go to games over and over and over and just watch him grow. Um, Patrick, you were already like polished, like as, a, as somebody to talk to. Eric, like I said. Eric didn't say much. Alex was the one who used to talk, talk, talk. And Eric kind of just grew. And and it took time. But you, you you got it. You got it. I mean, it took you a little while, but you got it. Sure. No, I, like I said, it was, I remember Jeff was the, the first guy. Like, I remember. And, I, you know, like you said, I was I was a quiet kid. And, and maybe, you know, I, I had talent. Um. And a lot of that came from like the prior, like I, I told the story of how I started when I was like 12 to take it seriously. And like so much work from like 12 to 14 before I went to St. Mark's and I kind of grew into my body and like I had ability for sure. And like you said, the maybe the confidence, I think, you know, you learn to become confident and believe in yourself through the work you put in, but also having success builds that too. And like, I still was so new to it and like from such a small town, but I, I honestly, I can say like you, gave me a lot of confidence at that age. 
like you saying, you know, positive things about me. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, I'm serious. It, it made a big difference for sure. You know, like being that, being a kid that age from small town, you know, you know, you're pretty good, but you don't, you know, whatever, you don't really know. Right. right. You don't really know. And you're then in your you're, own bubble. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then like somebody like you, who's, who's at the time, I think you were a scout already or, and like saying that this kid could be good. I think it, it definitely helped me you know, mentally, and it gave me, gave me a lot of confidence, and, um, yeah, we, we, we go, way, and, you know, we go way, the, the first, the first guy, the first, the absolute yeah. first guy. So, Why Jeff, uh, take him, like, like, these guys would go out AU in Vegas, yeah. and my deal would be always to, um, to take him out for dinner, and, and, like, as a writer, you're probably not supposed to do that. Probably right? not. You're, you're supposed to be objective. But like, even when Murph got in trouble and you guys might've already told this story and I don't, you know, we can use this for the pot or not use it, but like Murph gets in trouble at Florida and I'm like, damn, like I can't be objective when it comes to Murph. I can't, I can't like, it's like, I feel like, like he's family in a way, but you, you, you got to sort of be objective a little. I remember, Hey Murph. I remember at one point you went on a run at Florida where you were unbelievable every night. And I was tweeting out like positive stuff for every game. And then you have one really shitty game. And I'm like, if I tweet something negative, his mom's going to come after me. And I did. I think I tweeted something negative and I got word maybe through your dad. Like, I think your dad called me and I knew it was coming from your mom. Like sure. your dad, Jay wasn't calling me to, to rip, but like, I think your mom was upset and I'm like, but I got to, like, if he's having a bad game and I, I think I texted you and you were like, I sucked, like yeah. put it out there. I sucked that game. I deserve it. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, at that point I knew, like, I knew what it was. Like if I didn't play well, it's like, what well, you can't say, Oh, he played, you know, it just was what it was. I didn't play well, but yeah, no. Pivey is not the one to, to <laughs> you want to go on the wrong side of. She is no, no, yeah. no chance. So, so you're doing Jeff, well, I want, Jeff. Go I want to ask back. you. So when uh, when Mur when you saw that Murph decided to commit to Florida, you know what was your and you know obviously new coach Donovan at that time. Did you see that as being a great fit for him? Yeah, I, I did because I I still thought Murph needed to get a little bit tougher. Like his dad, his parents are tough. Don't get me wrong. They are tough. But I felt like Billy was the perfect coach for him because he toughened him up even more and take him to that next level, right? And, and Billy, Billy was maniacal. You guys know. I mean, yeah. he is maniacal, out of his mind. And I think Billy's biggest strength, and I don't know if we've talked about this, Pat, but like one of the things that makes Coach Donovan, Billy, I, I can't call him Coach Donovan. I'm only doing that because you guys are on the um, <laughs> so good is that he's so focused on the moment and not really worried about any of the other shit. Like if he's talking to you, he's not looking at his phone. He is locked into you. If he's working you out, he's thinking about that and that alone. And I think that's a gift where so many people with all the distractions going on in, in lives these days, yeah. like that's something that sets him apart to me. No question. And I'm, and Pat, Pat, Pat will say the same thing. And everybody that's played for him will say, they'll tell you, and you hit it on the head. They'll say the same exact thing. Some, I think the biggest takeaway that all, most of his players have, if not all of them is, is like all he preached was the right now, right now, right, right, now, now. right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right <laughs> now. Um, that, you know, that was, but he, he did and he preached it every day. And it, like, it's something I, I you know, obviously with basketball, it's, it's important. Um, but like, I, I, I took that into, you know, everything, my total, my total life view. Um, and, and it, it's, like, it's such a, an important part of, of my life philosophy now at this point that like, and, and I can give that almost all that credit to him. You know, you, 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 you hear that from other people, but like he continuously, continuously every day preached it. So like when that's your coach and you're with him every day and you hear it every day, it just becomes a part of you for sure. Hey, did you tell this story already on the pod? Did Patrick get get you to go through the story? The, no, the, we didn't. no, we did didn't go do through it. No. We didn't. We, 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 were, we were building up. I'm, I'm like, I'm very, I'm very okay with telling the story now. I mean, you look I, now that I'm, you know, 
even like even a couple years later like i look back and it was it's funny yeah i mean very you know how i am uh, i'm very laid back i don't take things too seriously like it became funny very quickly maybe like a little more quickly than it should have you know but i <laughs> definitely flipped a switch for me though in the long yeah. run that's yeah i mean I, that's that's the hope in this podcast is you know the guys that everyone's faced some adversity we don't want to just glorify the story we want to talk about how it affected you moving forward how you overcame how how you you know you look at the situation now but definitely want to we, we want to hear about it <laughs> all right you guys want to i'll give you the the, the quick the quick rundown I'll, I'll get a little in depth so we go to saint augustine me josh adell and cody larson josh adell one of my closest friends to this day cody larson i haven't talked to in a while but you know we, we were friends at the time um and we go to St. Augustine Beach where I was 20. I wasn't 21 yet because that was very important in the story. Um, we go to some beach bar, like they don't ID, whatever we get, you know, we get very, very drunk as college kids do. Uh, so we, we go outside and, and like we're waiting. Josh, Josh's parents had a condo in St. Augustine. So but it was far. So we, we would call a cab and we're waiting for the cab and this cab's taking forever. And there's one car in this like dirt parking lot. And uh, so we're like, like I said, very, very drunk. Like, like you know, kind of stumbling around being very dumb, obviously not thinking. Um, and I lay on the hood of the car and I'm kind of like taking a nap, like half asleep, like waiting for this cab, whatever, sprawled out in front of this car. Cody, like the, he, he opens the back door and the, it was unlocked. We didn't break any, like we, and that, you know, that, that, that was important too in the long run. We didn't break in or anything like that was unlocked and he lays down in the back seat. And uh, we, we obviously weren't thinking. Um, there's one car there, the bar's just closing. So it was one of the bouncer's cars. And the bouncer runs out and he's like yelling back in. He's like, they're trying to like steal the car, break into the car, whatever. They call the police. And Cody was on probation for something that had happened in high school. So he hears police and he took off. And and I see him running and I'm like, you know, like drunk and blur. Like I see him running. I'm looking back. Like I see like six bouncers running at me. And I'm like, no shot. I'm dealing with this. I took off. So Josh like I said, he's, he's, he's one of my closest friends. Uh, so I can, you know, give him a little, give him a little shit on this podcast. He had a torn ACL. He had just come off a torn ACL. Oh no. So like we got, me and Cody got away. We were out. We were, we were long gone. <laughs> and Josh couldn't really run. So they snatched him up. And uh, we always say if, if, if he, Yeah, yeah. No, and no, well, for sure. Josh is the greatest athlete. But uh, no, it, it ended up really not mattering because like for sure they, they knew they knew who we were, whether it was like from just playing basketball or like we were probably running our mouth in there, you know, being dumb, drunk. And so they ended up knowing who we were. So he called me and he's like, you got to come back. Like they have me in cuffs, so you got to come back, whatever. So I went back and uh, they put me in cuffs, put me in the back of the cop car me and Josh in the back of the cop car and Cody's not coming back because he's on probation that he's like, I'm not, but we ended up finally finding him. And, uh, I, the, the, the worst part was the recording, you know, there was like a 30 minute audio, which thankfully is somehow gone. I think we got like the lawyers somehow got that off the air. I don't really know how, how that worked, but th thank God that's gone. Um, cause we're like, you can, I mean, you listen to that. You're like, these guys were the drunkest guys in Florida. And that, <laughs> saying a lot uh and we were trying to come up with stories excuses whatever just you know then we got put in jail and uh you know you go in the holding cell overnight we tried to I, you get one phone call has to be to a landline call home nobody answers they were at a, a thomas's a au tournament in like connecticut or something so i'm like i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know how long i don't know how this works like I, somebody has to bail me out but i don't know what the process is i'm getting ready to be in there for a couple of days uh, we had tried to call Richard Patino Jr. He was he was a coach at the time. We we left a couple of messages on his cell phone. I think that was that ended up being how we got in, got in touch with Josh's mom, who bailed us out. But so we went in the holding cell. 
I'm like, we don't really know what's going to happen. Never been through this before. 6 a.m. rolls around. They take us out of the holding cell, take all our clothes, our belongings, give us the jail jumpsuits, wow. cuffs, cuffs, cuffs around my wrists with a chain to cuffs around my ankles. Oh, my God. All three of us. And they put us in the in the arraignment room and the judge comes in. We found out later she was a Florida State grad. Um, so, like, guys are getting their, their arraignments right. It's like domestic abuse, like bail is $2,500, whatever. She's reading all... She gets to us and she's like, uh, I forget what the charge exactly was to start with. It got like, it wasn't what it ended up being. It was like felony burglary or felony attempted grand theft or something ridiculous. And she's like, bail's $5,000. And I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know what's going to happen. So then after that, they put us in, uh, they separated the three of us and they put us like, I was in, I think I was in cell block D. And it was like me and like 20 other guys. And I was just like, this is, uh, it's not how I imagined my Sunday going. Um, but uh, luckily, Josh's mom came down and bailed us out. We didn't, I, I didn't know what was, because I didn't get in touch with anybody. I didn't really know what the situation was going to be. And then, um, got back to school and that night, and it was like, it was all over ESPN and everything. And, you know, I, I, felt, I felt bad about it personally, but I also, you know, the, the effect it had on, like, like my, my dad told me later, like, he flew down the next day and, like, you don't want to see Big J angry. Like that's not a, it's not a pretty sight. But uh, he was angry, but he was also like, you know, more worried. I think. And uh, like he told me later, like kids at Thomas's school were like giving him crap about it. And I was like, that's you know, I mean that 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 was more. You know, personally, it was bad for me, but like stuff like that like affected me more. But I I think. So the, so, actually, the most important part of the story I, I didn't I didn't mention is. At that point, it was after my sophomore year, right after the sophomore season. Everybody's telling me to transfer. Everybody's like, leave the school because I hadn't had a great sophomore year. I'd got played well at the beginning, got hurt, and like didn't have a great sophomore year. And everybody's like, go somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. Everybody, every from all the history, like my basketball history in my life, from all angles, everybody's telling me to leave. And so I met with Coach Donovan the day earlier in the day that this happened that night. So like Saturday, I met with him in his office. He was like, he's like, what do you want to do? He's like, it doesn't matter what anybody else is telling you. It, it's up to you. It's your decision. Like, it doesn't matter where you go. You can't run. Like, if you want to be great, it, it's not where you go. It's not like, it, it's what you do to be, to become great. It's not, it's not the situation. Like, you're not running from this here and going somewhere else. And it's not going to just, you know, the, the, the switch isn't going to flip. And, uh, I remember I got like really emotional. I, you know, I'm not an emotional guy. You know that. Like I don't really very even keel, but like I broke down. And I was like, I love it here. Like I want to be here. He's like, then tell everybody that. He's like, who cares? Like, cut all that out. Like it doesn't matter. He's like, none of that matters. The right. He's like, what you want to do is what's important. So I came out of that like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I was so happy. Then I get arrested, and and I, I'm all I can think about is like he's kicking me off the team for sure. Like I'm done. No question. I got back, I think I met with him Monday morning. And he was like, listen, we all make mistakes. Like, we'll get through it. And I was just like, this guy is an unbelievable, that's the biggest thing. You know, him is a, obviously an unbelievable coach. Him as a person, like just one of the best people I've ever, ever met, ever had the, you know, honor of being around. So I, when, when, when that yeah. happened. Like, like he, he might not have done exactly what you did, but let's face it, Billy Donovan, was not the model citizen probably as a as a kid. No, no twenty, no nineteen twenty year old Division one basketball. No, yeah, when you nineteen twenty year old college guys are not. No one's you know. Sorry, right. doing something. But that helped your career, Eric. Like that. That no was question. a crossroads for your career in which it could have gone completely south, and instead, it kind of right. What did it do for you? I mean, it just kind of like grounded me and, and, and made me think, consider what I really wanted out of my life. You know, I, you know, I was having a great time in Florida as a freshman and sophomore basketball player. Like I'm having, you know, I was having way too much fun. No question. And, you know, like basketball was part of it. Like I enjoyed that, but like I was, I was, I was just having too much. And like, I had to really refocus on what I wanted out of my life. And that was, you know, basketball. That was what was always, you know, my love, the most important thing to me. And it definitely refocused me. And like, I, 
I, I fully recommitted to the game and, and, and went back to work. Like it was square one with my dad in the gym. Like I was in the gym, you know, I couldn't do anything with the team for a while, but I was in the gym every day for hours. And, and like you said, it just, it, it changed my whole career path. No question. And I became probably the, the most pivotal point in my life. Very cool. So, story. That's the story. No, it's listen. It, it's it's very cool because, again, I was worried about you. I remember talking with Jay that night, and I was I was worried about you that next day of like what would happen because I knew everybody was telling you to transfer, and I probably thought it might have been the better spot too. I, I maybe I thought it was you know just good to have a, a a fresh start maybe somewhere else. But man, sticking through it, yeah. more kids need to do that these days. You know, you guys yeah, think about that. Like you, like Too many you, you kids would have yeah. just gone. Like you said earlier, you know, the best thing for me about going to Florida was was Coach D, like, instilling a, a different level of toughness. You know, I was, you know, like I was telling Pat, our high school practices at St. Mark's physically were the hardest practices I've ever, like, no question. Like, the, the amount of running that Coach Lubick put us through and just, like, physical like borderline abuse you know what i mean <laughs> not but, but not you know it was just he was just tough he was just a, like he was just a old tough school guy. yeah oh so old school and like i thought i was tough but there's a whole different level of toughness that's not you know oh like i'm a tougher guy than you like i'll i'll, I'll beat you up or like i'll you know it's 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 more of like a mental like long-term strength you know like you have to you have to look at at, 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 at it in a different way at a, in a larger way like toughness isn't about people have this idea of toughness that it's just like oh the bigger stronger you know what it's like mental perseverance no matter what happens like you have to stay focused always on like the right now as coach domino always preach it's and, and like you said that was such an important thing and then i think after that him having that faith in me you know kind of reinvigorated my like my I don't know desire to to kind of prove everybody you know I, I one thing about me I'm competitive for sure like I have I've always been like that and like if, if somebody challenges me I'm not backing down and like it, it lit a fire in me to be like okay everybody's wrong like yeah. everybody's wrong yeah like that's it's not I'm, I'm not I, it's not I always felt like with you I said this probably when you were young even I was like, somebody, hit somebody needed to hit him. Somebody needed to hit Murph. If somebody hit him on the head, like, or whatever, then all of a sudden, he, you, you had to get him pissed off. And then it was like, all right, now he's an MFer. But until then, it was like, sometime, and again, he could do it with his talent level when he was young. He could get away with just playing, you know, lax and still beating the crap out of people. But, I mean, I remember, listen, Murph, do you remember – I started that top 75 camp because of you and, and Oriaki. Yeah. That's why I started. They wouldn't play against each other because in Massachusetts, it was like the AU programs wouldn't play against each other. I started this top 75 camp they thought, yeah. for, for every year, but only seriously because of Eric and Alex Oriaki that they, they wouldn't play against each other. Hmm. And you remember Nate, Nate was complaining because I didn't invite him. And, and we took like Sharky instead of Nate the next year. He still reminds me to that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, you're right. It, you know, my, that's just my personality. Like I'm laid back, like things don't bother me. And, and, you know, my dad would say the same thing always. He, like, he'd be like, you got to get fired up. Like something has, and when I got triggered though, when something set me off, it would, it would definitely change, you know, my mentality and, and, and how I played the game. And, you know, that's another part of, of getting, of, of getting older and growing and, and becoming, you know, like I said, mental, it's not mental toughness. It, toughness is not just like, there's a, there's a lot of aspects to it. And like, you have to get to a point where you can control that and learn how to, you know, grasp that, that feeling and, and, and come with it every night. And uh, I think I learned that over the years for sure. But like, like you said, it, it sometimes it, it took something to set me off, but the, yeah. Then, sometimes then, sometimes it still does you know it's just i and i don't know if i would change that about myself i kind of yeah. you know no why why change for what why uh but i do know but now i'm very so like i know that about myself at that yeah. age you know that about yourself you know what i mean yeah like, that's I, true yeah 
Merv, what was your you know favorite moment after you know after that that year after that uh everything happened? Uh, you know, what became your favorite moment as a Gator as a player? I, if you could say if you could find one right now, because I know there's a lot of great moments. Yeah. First thing that came, comes to mind. There's so many, man. I mean, like, like I miss honestly. I miss like just like being around like you guys in the in the locker room. Like the, the thing that I miss, the thing like when you play basketball and you play so many games in your life and, and you you've given your entire life to it. it you you kind of you know it becomes so hyper important that like you forget about a lot of little things but like just in like our teams were so like we had such good groups like it was so fun every day was fun yeah, even bad days were fun you know you look back you, you i even missed the bad days you know what i mean like it, it was i just missed that that it's the, the, and i'm sure it's like this a lot of places too but you know we have our bias but like that gator that gator way it's just different it's different man it really was yeah. Even, I, even I really the freaking charge drill. I enjoyed, I say I enjoyed the charge drill, but. I definitely did not enjoy the charge drill when I was taking the charge on you. That was not enjoyable. But um, I think like the biggest thing I miss is, is, is just being like around the guy, like pra just going into practice every day. Like you, you, you don't realize, you know, you go into practice every day, you're tired. You're like, oh, this, I don't want to practice today. But after you leave, like, that was the most fun I've ever had. Like, to this day, that's the most fun I've had playing basketball. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely some great basketball. I mean, just the locker room. It just You already know, man, it's just so different from college to becoming a professional. Guys are coming in and out. And then, you know, you get four years with guys that are grinding, trying to make it. It's really for the love of the game, uh, et cetera. But okay, after you know you ended up getting drafted, going on to uh, to play with the Bulls, you know what was that transition like? That experience of becoming you know becoming a pro, and then you know it's almost like starting over again. So, uh, draft night was, I mean, that's like when you're a kid growing up. That's you dream of that. That's that's your ultimate dream is playing in the NBA. So like hearing my name called was that like. One of, the, one of the top two or three moments in my life, you know, there's a few others, but I think, you know, basketball wise, I was probably, you know, just the, the feeling of accomplishment. But at the same time, um, you know, playing in the NBA, you, you always, like I said, I'm, I'm a competitor. You get to that level and it's like, I uh, barely played and, and, you know, probably didn't, you know, but expectations a killer coach Tom would always say that too, but you know, I didn't live up to my own personal expectations. Like, you know, I always wanted to be like a, an NBA player, you know, play in the NBA, be, be, a, be a guy in the NBA that's like, you know, playing meaningful minutes and stuff like that. But, you know, and it's all situational and sometimes it just doesn't work out like that. And I, I wouldn't change anything about my career path at this point. But at the time, you know, I was, it, was, it was frustrating at times. But I do remember on draft night trying not to look at like Twitter and everything and like trying to just watch it and take it all in like in the moment. But like it was, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at Twitter. I'm, there's no way I'm not looking. And Jeff was Jeff was the guy that broke it. I, I was the guy that that I saw first. Really? Yeah, first tweet I saw. That was the first tweet I saw that, that said I was going to the Bulls. And it was like three or four minutes before the pick. You're always on top of it. Always had the early call. But um, those are the coolest things for me, man. Those that's are, awesome. And again, those are the moments for me that like make my job worth it. They are like. You know, the games are great. They are. I mean, watching you play from a young age, great. I still wish I could watch you play. But, like, watching you go from a kid, legitimately a kid, to being drafted in the NBA, like, I don't know. I mean, I always thought you'd, you'd be there. It's not yeah. like I didn't think you'd be I drafted. I remember that, too. I do. I remember specifically. There's, there's a lot of it, you know, there's a lot of memories coming up. But, like, early on, I think you were – I think with the New England, the, the top 75 thing, I think you wrote like something after the first year of that. And you wrote like something, you know, obviously, you know, very nice about me. But then at the end of it, you were like, don't be surprised if this kid is making money playing in the NBA one day. And like, I, it, it ended up, you know, happening. Hold on, somebody's knocking my door. Let me just answer this real quick. Good. That's insane. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, this is, this is a cool one for me. I got to say, like, there aren't many – that get me emotional, Patrick, 
Like this is one of those that just again. No, we, like, we have we have film right now. Oh, you oh, do? You? Yeah. yeah. All right, go oh, ahead. So I got to go. Um, like, <laughs> you want you want me to call you back right after film, Pat? No, we had we were we were about to close it up anyway. All right, all right, perfect. Because yeah, they, I, we have film. We have, I didn't even I didn't know. <laughs> You're 30. You're 30. You've been playing all the time. I'll show you time. I'll show you time. Oh, all right. I got to go, though, right now. Okay. Love you, man. Hey. Murph, thank you so much for your time, man. We really appreciate it. Hey, thank you. And that was an awesome surprise. I appreciate you coming on, Jeff. <laughs> no, I love you, man. You know that. And uh, continued success. And uh, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. All right. All right. Jeff, I guess we can uh, talk a little bit of Gator basketball to close this thing out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We'll man, give it a couple uh, minutes. They struggled against Arkansas. Ooh. This Arkansas team, you know, I, I had a, you know, had my interview with SEC Network the other day, um, and we talked about Arkansas just going into Missouri. I watched the game. Um, I really, I really like the, the the point guard for Missouri. I think he's he's he, he's hard Pinson. hard nosed, but yeah, uh, Pinson's good. This Arkansas team, Coach Coach Donovan used to call Arkansas and LSU low rent. MFers, <laughs> did he? <laughs> they are. They always have. I mean, especially back then, LSU. Yeah, <laughs> those dudes. Could, they were tough. That Final Four team. But you know, they're they're Arkansas right now. They're looking like a team that's starting to play well. Their freshmen are stepping up and figuring it out. You know, I can't be. Wouldn't be surprised if they get a better seating than what they're projected. They're projected like a nine, eight, eight, nine seed. They might be able oh, they to. They could be a with six. The, you know, six. Yeah. You know, they, maybe they can maybe they can make some noise. They continue to 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 play this well. I don't know. They just hadn't beaten anybody up until the last week, and they'd had kind of an empty resume, and and then they get two big wins this past week. Again, you know, I, I think Florida. If you're Florida right now, you got to finish strong, and make sure you stay the heck away from that eight nine line. Like yeah. you do not want to see that eight nine line, uh, because I think that's they're close right now. Yeah. They're probably in that like seven, eight range, I think. But what you don't want is in your second game, if you get to your second game, to see Gonzaga or Baylor. Do you know if um, that Tennessee game is going to get rescheduled? I don't. I don't yet. Yeah, I don't yet. Yeah, I think, you know, if, if they could go in and win that game, Tennessee right. still being ranked, that'd be huge. Uh, but, you know, Tennessee, man, when they lose, they lose badly. It's, well, they can't <laughs> score. They just <laughs> can't score. And they're so helter scale. Like you just don't know, like you said, what what to expect. Listen, the, the good thing about the SEC this year, if you're in the SEC, if Alabama is the best team, and they are right now, yeah, for sure. It, it's not like you're saying like we can't beat Alabama. Like anybody can come out of that SEC tournament, other than probably Vanderbilt and and, and win it. You know, like anybody. Um, it's it just it's not a great league this year. It's not. I've said it all year. People have kind of pushed back on me for it, but there's just a lot of, and that's kind of the way it is around the country in a lot of leagues. ACC, same thing, not a great team. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think if you're the Gators, can you get some momentum? And, and I still, you know, I still think a lot of this goes to to what happened early in the season with yeah. Keontae and, Absolutely. and what happened with Scotty yep. being out. You know, it, 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 it hurts you. Listen, it hurts you because you lost your best player, number one. And it hurts you mentally. like Best it, player and leader. Best player and leader of the team, you best know. Best player, leader, highest character kid, like yep. just all, everything. Like not about himself at all. Yep. You never hear a bad word about him. Everybody loves him. So Everybody loves him. that away, it, it, your margin for error is just minimal now. It's minimal. Where where do you think, you know, because the, 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 the birds are chirping, obviously, um, regarding Mike White. In this yeah. time, you know, sixth season, um, post post Donovan, where where do you think he stands right now? I mean, and, and you got to take into account. I mean, this is COVID. Yes, uh, so many factors. Um, I'm reading this book, Extreme Ownership, okay. right now. Awesome, it's written by a few Navy SEALs, and it just talks about there's no such thing as a bad team, but bad leaders. And I don't think Coach White's a bad leader no. at all. No, not all, not at all. But um, you know who he's you know. like. Here, here's here's my comparison to him, Pat is I live in Boston and, and right now the Celtics, he's getting crushed. The Celtics are 13, 14 and 14 for the season. They've got obviously Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. And part of the problem I think is that Brad Stevens is a little bit too nice. 
Yeah. And, and he doesn't jump. He, you know, you have Billy. Like, Billy jumped you. Like, oh, he man. had no problem jumping you probably too often. Yeah. Probably too much. Mike White's the opposite. And, and it's funny because he play, like he coached for Andy Kennedy, who's an MFR. Like, he, he's got some of that in him. But, but I think ultimately Mike White is still about, you know what, I'm going to treat people with respect. I don't need to jump them. Um, you know, I'm sure he does at times, but that's not his MO. And you just wonder if maybe at times this group needs a little bit more of that yeah. and a little bit uh, less positivity. I would say the same thing with the Celtics. And, and I think, listen, Brad Stevens and Mike White are two of the best human beings I've ever met, not only doing this job, but on the planet that yeah. I've ever met doing anything like those guys are like salt of the earth. Salt people. of the earth. Yeah, exactly. They sure are. So like you want, I want Mike White to get the most out of this team. I, I do think he may have to push a few different buttons to be able to do that and be a little more adaptable. Um, but again, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't move on from Mike White. I wouldn't, I, I think he's no. just got to, and I, he said it to me last year, Patrick, he said, we were in, in uh, Charleston for the tournament last year, and we were talking. And he said, listen, it's going to take me some time to get used to coaching some of these guys, these one-and-done or guys who think they're one-and-dones and dealing with all the people around them, too. Yeah, yep, yep. Absolutely. You know, I definitely thought, you know, was Omar Payne a sophomore now? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking we get a little bit more production from him. Yep. Uh, yep. Colin Castleton has been, been great. He's been struggling. Uh, a little bit lately, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, I love, I love coach white. I think, um, you know, Trey Mann definitely needs another year. Yeah. They all uh, need another year. They, they all, they all need another year for well, sure. Scotty, you, listen, Scotty, I'm Move. sure he thought he was going to be, he was going to be done freshman year. He told me that. And then he was going to be done for sure this year. You know, listen, if I were him, I'd sit my ass in the gym every single day, shooting a thousand shots. And, uh, and making sure you have that confidence in the offensive man, because yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think he's Corey Brewer. I do. Yeah. I think he'd be Corey Brewer. And Corey Brewer was having having Walter Hodge on earlier. Uh, yeah. He talked about how Corey Brewer was the best defender, first and foremost. He 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 took pride. Like Corey was locking everybody up. So yeah. you know that's that's got to be your your mo. I think, especially in you know how many how many guys go to the NBA that are one and done or going. And they come in straight to be that offensive guy. <laughs> it's nobody. 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 <laughs> oh no. I mean, KD, you know, like there, there's no, you know, nobody who who just walks in and is that guy. And if you're Scotty Lewis, be Corey Brewer, be Andre Roberson, you know, Robertson, be somebody like that first. Yeah. Then you can work on your offensive game when you get to the league. And that's all you got to worry about yep. is shooting. And if you put your if you put the work in over and over and over. You will become an above average shooter. Will you be an elite shooter? I don't know. But he'll be an above average shooter if he works at it. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, we got to wrap it up. We're getting uh, Mitchell to send us the message. This was cool. It was cool having you slide in, pop in, and uh, and take over for a bit. I, I really like that and uh, getting a chance to hear see you and Murray. I didn't know you guys. Uh, you knew him since he was that young. And yeah. just seeing that full circle and, you know, that that, that was awesome, man. I'm, I'm a, you know. With looking back when we started this thing, you were telling with, back in November when we started talking about it, or October, whenever it was, yep. uh, this has been above and beyond anything I, I could have ever expected it to be. And thankful, man. Thank you. Um, you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad you had fun. And, and you made, honestly, I mean this, you made my day today. Because <laughs> I hope you could see it on my face. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does. With all you guys. Like, I feel like with all you guys, like, it's so cool to see Again, you doing what you're doing right now, right? And and it doesn't surprise me at all. Like I knew from the first moment I met you in AU, like you could do, but it's still different watching yeah. you grow up and mature. And I don't know. It, it again, I'm old, man. I'm getting old. That's, <laughs> that's what this show is. I'm getting damn old. But I I love this podcast. This is my favorite podcast I've done this year. Seeing this you really? and Mark. Oh man, that's so, crazy. I appreciate it. Well, let's close it on out, everyone. This was Eric Murphy and surprise guest, the one and only Jeff Goodman joining me here on The Young and the Rowdies. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the Field of 68 Media Network. We're continuing to grow. Uh, coming into March Madness, baby. You know what time it is. Time to 
to, to see, see what we love, college basketball, Cinderella stories, all the things that come with it. Can't wait to see what uh, Baylor and Gonzaga are going to do. The two teams that are running college basketball. Can someone upset their story with these two teams meet in the finals? Who knows? Can't wait. Anyways, Gator Nation and the rest of the world, stay rowdy.